Hi, this will be the last episode of the mini-series how to interface the OV7670 camera using the ESP32. First of all, thank you for your help. I read all your comments and uh, got also hints on some documents how to um, set the resolutions correctly on the camera and so on and was able to fix uh, some bugs and some problems with the FIFO camera but the most frequent request was to use the camera without the FIFO memory. So here it is. It's working and uh, that's what I have done all the week. I have also implemented a basic web server that serves the images via HTTP so you can see them in your browser. But this is more of a slideshow than a live stream because the transmission of the images is quite slow. And to improve this we could implement a UDP packet based transmission or some kind of compression, but I don't have something like that in place so far. While implementing the web server, I wanted to try higher resolution since some of you requested this and I wanted to utilize the complete FIFO memory since we can uh, read a part, send this and read the next part from the memory. But this seems to not work since the memory is overwritten while we are st still sending the image and the write flag seems not to work. I don't know what's the problem there. If you have a solution for this, please tell me in the comment. Uh, I couldn't figure it out. As I referenced before, there is this ESP32 CAM demo. Uh, this is a quite cool project from Ivan Grokotkov from Espressive. And this shows how the um, I2S parallel mode works because there is no documentation how to use this. This is the only source and the comments in GitHub. And I took the essential parts uh, for implementing the I2S and DMA into an Arduino project and uh, made a very simple and basic project with the essentials there. So not much overhead there. The new project also uses the Arduino based web server implementation. So I will walk you through the details about the hardware, how to control it and the essentials and what I have changed since the last video. First of all, I will show you the web server, how it works. I have implemented a Node-RED flow to embed uh, the image that is received via HTTP um, into my home automation tab here. You can see the weather station is still working. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this is the speed uh, to expect currently from the camera. It isn't the best, uh, but still it's working. I have implemented the possibility for this device whenever it connects to the Wi-Fi to publish the IP address um, over MQTT. So we can use Node-RED to catch this IP address and construct this uh, MQTT dashboard a UI element that's updating um, also the frames. Of course you can use it directly from the web browser. Uh, the main page is simply a small script that refreshes the images but you can use the address slash camera to get the uh, current image but this is not updated so if you want a single image you can use this. Of course, lowering the resolution increases the frame rate over Wi-Fi since there is less data to transfer. And also the update rate of the TFT can be increased since there is a smaller portion to update. As always, you can find the details for the project and the codes and the parts on my project page, which is linked below. And since this video covers many topics, you will find shortcuts in the description below. First of all, let's cover the changes that I have done since the last video. We have a new sketch here to tidy up. I have put the pins in a separate file so you can find the configurations there. In the main part, um, not much changed. Uh, Wi-Fi capabilities are added so you have to configure your Wi-Fi SSID here and the password. And also you can configure MQTT here. Uh, you have the option to use MQTT or not. You have just to comment this out if you don't want to use MQTT or the TFT as well. The setup changed a little bit. The connection to the Wi-Fi is done first. And then we have the MQTT stuff here. So 
uh, we try to connect to MQTT and publish the IP address. After this is done, we are done with MQTT and it's disconnected. Using the Adafruit library for MQTT, we are not able to transfer the whole image simply because of the size limit and also uh, the lack of memory. But I could imagine that an implementation that's aware of the size of the image uh, could solve this. And then after that, we have a simple helper method that's initializing in the BMP header. So we are transferring the images as a BMP file. And this is a 16-bit BMP, which supports the format that we get from the camera. Nothing else changed in the setup. In the main loop, we have read frame, which simply reads one frame into the frame buffer. That's happening here. And after that, if we have the TFT enabled, uh, we display the image here and then serve any clients that have connected to receive the image via HTTP. The surf method, I took a web server example and simply changed it a bit. If the client requests uh, the root page, we simply serve an HTML document, which has a simple script that's uh, updating the images. And the images are taken from uh, the URL camera on the IP. And if camera is requested, uh, that is covered here. So we are sending um, the content type image BMP. So this is the MIME type. And then sending first the header that we have prepared in the setup. And then the complete frame. As I mentioned before, sending partial frames that are read directly from the FIFO memory didn't work because the memory is overwritten. So this is this commented out portion here. The bitmap header helper here um, this is creating a 16-bit uh, bitmap header that's filled in this buffer. So it doesn't contain the actual pixels. This is simply the beginning of the file. And after that, all the pixel data is sent. And uh, we are setting simply this uh, header with the resolution, the bits here, and also the color masks that are needed since uh, we have packed all the three colors in just the two bytes. 16-bit BMPs are not common, but uh, they work. So why not use it? In the code for the camera, I have simply changed a few things. So I fixed um, setting the resolutions uh, according to the document that, that I have received from you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is working better now. I have also changed the frame control uh, to not have artifacts in triple Q VGA formats. This is all from the FIFO camera. You can use the code. You will find this uh, BMP MQTT sketch on the project page. And now let's continue without the FIFO. Let's take a look at the pins of the camera without the FIFO. We have 3.3 volts here, ground here. Then SSCB pins here. So these are compatible to I2C. And uh, this is the clock and this is the data pin. We have VSync, href, which is high whenever a line is sent. The pixel clock, this clock is set whenever the next byte of a pixel is ready. So uh, these data lines here. And here is the input clock, which is the clock on which the camera and the chip is operating. Then we have the reset pin, which uh, should be high whenever the camera is operating and power down, which can be left unconnected. And then we have my setup here with the ESP32, uh, the Lolin32 board. And the wires are connected like configured in the code. The only additional components are those two resistors, 4.7K ohm. These are needed for the I2C interface, so the clock and uh, the data pins are pulled high. Everything is working on 3.3 volts here. The only pins that can't be changed right now are only the SPI pins for the TFT display. We are using the hardware SPI with the MOSI and the clock. The fifo -less camera implementation is based on ESP Cam demo, which was published by Ivan Grokotkov. He is working for Espressive and he provided all the codes uh, that made the ESP module so popular. This demo was implemented for the Espressive IDF and I have just taken parts to make it running in the Arduino IDE. This demo is the only source on how to program the I2S 
in parallel mode. It provides some explanations here and um, this graphic which looks intimidating but I will go through and explain every part of it. On the left side we can see the camera and on the right side the operation of the ESP32. The crucial parts are uh, that we have to provide the clock for the camera since we don't have the oscillator. For this we can use the LED control and send a 20 MHz uh, PWM pulse on a pin. So this part simply shows how it's initialized and here we can see the I2S peripheral and we have some signals, the horizontal, vertical sync and uh, the pixel clock which control whenever the I2S should read the data and push to the memory. As you can see here the pins D0 to D7 are read at once uh, by the I2S parallel mode here. We configure the I2S to use a DMA which is the direct access memory. Um, this can push all the data directly into the memory without utilizing the CPU. What is not shown here, we have a small FIFO between the I2S and the DMA buffers, but this multiplexer controls how the bytes that are received are packed into the memory. We're using multiple buffers because whenever one buffer is filled, we get an interrupt and have to handle this memory but while we do this, um, the I2S is still sending data and this is filled into the next buffer. In the most cases, two buffers are sufficient. They are simply linked in a ring. So whenever DMA buffer 1 is filled, it starts again with DMA buffer 0. Whenever the interrupt is triggered, uh, this demo switches on a filter task that's uh, filtering the buffer and sending to the frame buffer, but I do this in my code directly in the interrupt because it seems to be fast enough to fill the buffer before the next interrupt is triggered. The I2S based implementation is only working with the ESP32. The Arduino IDE needs uh, the extension for the ESP32 installed. The pin definitions have changed a little bit. We have the new clock that uh, it's an output and pixel clock as input. And I have reconfigured the pins a little bit so we still are able to use the most peripherals and also get fewer problems while programming the device. We have also the implementation for the Wi-Fi server. Uh, MQTT isn't uh, in yet because I wanted to keep it clean but this is straightforward to include it here as well. The setup is still quite similar, a little bit cleaned up here. The camera is now initialized like this here. In the main loop we have something like one frame which captures one frame in the frame buffer and then we serve and display it. The implementation of the I2S is done uh, here in these files. So I2S camera. This is type independent so it could be used with other cameras as well which simply controls the camera specific registers. So we have all the register code and setup and resolution setup here. So let's start with I2S camera. The initialization of the I2S camera does the I2S initialization first, then it allocates the DMA buffers and also the VSync which isn't used for now. But we could use it for some kind of high level control later. I just left it in. The I2S initialization starts here. First of all, it sets the input pins as input and after that uh, the GPIO matrix is set. This is a quite cool stuff. So uh, you can set uh, the input pins to be connected to certain signals of the peripherals. This is also available for the output. So what we do here is we route the eight data pins that we configured to the corresponding I2S data signals. But the interesting stuff here is the I2S works with 16 bits. So we could set up up to 16 bit input here. Since the camera only supports eight bits, uh, I just use this magic number hex 30 to root a zero. This is also here stated root is zero to the higher bits that are not used. Uh, this is optional, I just included it so you could reuse uh, the code for other stuff and uh, see all the definitions of the signals. 
The I2S of the ESP32 supports a certain camera mode and uh, this uses V-Sync, H-Sync, H-Enable and uh, the pixel clock here. So this is the pixel clock and what we have here since we don't have an H-Sync uh, we have the HREF which is inverted H-Sync so we simply send this magic number which is one uh, to this signal and this is quite important i struggled with this a little bit the i squared s in the camera mode only writes bytes to the memory if these signals here so these four are high but uh, the input pins could be low at this state so for example vsync is by default low when pixels are sent if you didn't configure it differently so I use here true to invert this pin and send inverted to this signal. So we get a high whenever pixels are sent. So third parameter here is invert or not. And here we have a one, so we don't need to invert this. Horizontal reference is high when pixels are sent. So this is correct, no need to invert here. And then we have the pixel clock and the pixel data is valid whenever this is high, so we can keep it like that. After this matrix configuration, we enable the i squared s peripheral here. Then we have a small helper method which resets uh, the flags for the i squared s. And then we set the i squared s to slave mode because the data is coming in on the pixel clock, which is external. And this is the magic to enable the parallel mode. And this sets the camera mode. The camera mode is helpful to not record any pixels that could be while the H-Sync or the V-Sync, since the pixel clock could go on there. This is the setting for the clock divider. I don't know what this actually means. Probably half a clock or something, I don't know. Uh, I tried different values and didn't see a difference there. So if anyone knows what this does, please tell us in the comments. So this part enables uh, the DMA, so we are shifting the bits into the FIFO memory. This is the mode, how the bits are packed. These modes are explained by Ivan on this link here. And also there are comments in the header file, how the bytes are packed. We are wasting a little bit of space here since the i s always writes 16 bits, but we are only receiving 8 bits. So you can see here in this notation, this represents a whole double word. So the first 16 bit that we receive end up in the high 16 bit of the first double word and the second 16 bit as the low 16 bit and so on. There are some different byte packing used by Ivan because there are some problems with the ESP32 when using fast mode, I didn't see the problems yet. But to go deeper into this, uh, I recommend to uh, check out this link and uh, read the comments and check out the demo on GitHub. And then we set up some other flags here. And since we're using the parallel mode, we clear all the serial flags here. As the final step in the I2S setup, we initialize the I2S interrupt, which is triggered whenever a DMA buffer is full. Next on our list is um, the DMA buffer in it. I'm using two DMA buffers and I have implemented a simple class for a buffer. This class allocates the memory that is needed for the buffer and also initializes the descriptor, which describes the size of the buffer and also what is the next buffer. So the DMA can continue immediately filling the next buffer if this is done. As we can see here in this loop, all the buffers are created and the previous buffer, the next pointer is set to the current buffer and the next of the last buffer is set to the first buffer. So we have a closed string of buffers. When the recording is started, the i squared run is called and this one waits for a new frame, disables the interrupt, resets everything, sets the sample count, and sets the pointer to the first descriptor of the first DMA buffer. And then some other mysterious flags are set and uh, 
Finally, the interrupts are enabled again. VSync is optional here. And RX start starts the I2S. To stop recording of the I2S, the interrupts are disabled, the configuration is reset, and RX start is set to zero. As a final step, let's take a look on the interrupt that I have used here. Um, and we have some operation here. I don't know what this means. I'm counting the blocks that I received and uh, monitoring the buffer. So I know which buffer was just filled. And I copy the bytes into the frame from the DMA double word packing into a simple word. So 16 bit colors here. And I am using just one buffer per line. The maximum size of a DMA buffer is four kilobytes and one buffer won't be sufficient for a VGA line. But uh, I wasn't able even to fit a QVGA image into the memory. It simply fails allocating the memory. Probably the Arduino framework implementation takes some more memory than in the scam demo. So we are not able to fit QVGA there. So I don't bother to inflate the code to handle multiple buffers per line. And I just count uh, the lines. If I have reached my resolution, I simply handle the signals if I have to stop recording and so on. And that's all for the I2S implementation. The only thing that is missing is the clock, but this is camera specific. So I placed it in OV7670 uh, constructor here. I'm using 20 megahertz since the ESP is running on 80 megahertz, which is a multiple of 20. So we get a smooth clock here. I didn't try other values. Um, this enables us to get 50 frames per second. If we have used 24 megahertz, we would get 60 frames per second. The OV class only sets the parameters and the resolution of the camera via the I squared C interface or the compatible one. And I have only implemented uh, QQVGA and triple QVGA so far, since uh, those are fitting into the memory. These methods are quite familiar from the other codes that I've done so far for the FIFO memory based camera. One viewer suggested to use maybe an interlaced mode, which could solve the problem with the memory. So we could, um, yeah, send uh, half images of QVGA. That's possible. The clock class, I simply took the code from the cam demo. It uses the LED control peripheral and I set the high speed mode to be able to send uh, the 20 megahertz. And here's the frequency and here is the pin that is used. Working on this project made me really fall in love with the ESP32. Um, I really love this uh, I2S with the DMA capabilities and also other peripherals, which we'll take a look on in future projects. I hope you found this project a little bit informative, even though it wasn't very entertaining. I just wanted to cover this camera on YouTube since there were not many videos available there that uh, explaining everything. And we got also an insight how in general the cameras are working and also how the I2S interface and the DMA is working on the ESP32. I'm looking forward to implement uh, entertaining projects with this now that the basics are covered. Thank you for all the helping comments and the documents that you have linked. It was really helpful. If you'd like to contribute your projects on this camera, please share them with us. I will also link them on my project pages. That's all for now and see you next time. Bye.